Yeah? I think we are still testing my mic. Yeah, yeah, because you are the one who has come now. La keep talking. Yes. Keep talking. Okay, not up. You brought mm. your best suit oh, okay. today. No, <laughs> this is far from my best. <laughs> I've never seen you in a suit. <laughs> really? I only use suits when I'm out of the country. Yes. Wow. Mm? Yeah, in three minutes we are on. But Simski, can you talk? Talk to me. <laughs> Very good. So, so. I was here yesterday when they were. Uh, Constructing the stage, this stage. Oh, looks like a big it's show. A really dance stage. Hmm? It's for Tigo. There's a promotion, I w think. Or whenever they they are doing the activations. They have yes. They have a contract with uh, with Rwanda TV. Okay. Every day, I think throughout the Christmas holiday. Okay. From <coughs> now onwards. Mm. Mm. They call millionaires live. You won your millions. Hope it won't distract it's going up to the end of the year. Yeah. I, I, th <coughs> I think. I'm, yeah, yeah. It's a bonus. What does it take? Promotion. You dial Air this, 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 okay. then you, you, you get in the draw. Into a draw. Then, huh? then you start competing. You know, Rwanda needs those promotions. That's why you're wearing blue. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always do. Uh, you know, it's part of it's 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 growing on me. I'll find myself on that stage. To <laughs> 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 you guys from here. <laughs> yeah? From up there. Who is who is presenting it? Uh it hasn't started yet. But have they recruited? I think do they so. know who is going to do? Such promotions always create a star, you know. But honestly, mm. Eugene, you, you should get these policy makers, the senators, the MPs. Yeah. They should be coming to these kinds of Yeah. What happened to the mean fraud guy? I'm gonna say it on there. Because it's not like he didn't try. I, man, even the RSSP guy. Eh? Mm. <laughs> but guys were First just of all, very early in the morning, he's like, th this is short notice. I'm like, okay, this is, this is your portfolio. These are the things you guys do every day. Just ask for a few notes from your, you know, or just delegate wait, wait. the person. He doesn't actually need the notes. He, he doesn't. This is your I mean, you, need, a, you need someone to push to the corner, mm -hmm. put on the spot now. You know? I'm looking at both yeah, of you guys. Even <laughs> we can push him when <laughs> he was still there. Yes, he that's do? about six Asa himself is that's a about <laughs> 17 years ago, my Haba, yeah. Haba is here, he's, he's a developer. <laughs> he's not a, he's a salesman. No, but I see it, it, it adds a bit of spice mm, yeah. mm. when there is a policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Because this whole problem is about policy. No, and I think that's when the politicians will either not avoid the technicians yeah. and the <coughs> technicians will not avoid yes. the policy makers. They, yeah. they should be here. We, we will start <coughs> with that. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, whatever we say on the air, they will be the first one to be critical tomorrow. Mm. And that's the point. Your way will it all mm. Mm. That's the point. They yeah. become defensive. That's mm. the point. We mm. want to push mm. them. It's like the B. Chokoreyo, we make a talk until it... Uh, mm. You can't And welcome to Debate 4 on 1. Thank you so much for making time for this program and, of course, for making it trending every Monday and Wednesday from <coughs> 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. live on this particular platform. All you need to do to be a part of the program, like many others do, you need to just tweet us at Debate 4 on 1 or you can tweet me directly at I'm Eugene Anangwe. All you need to also add in there in your comment is the hashtag Debate 4 on 1. Tonight, we are adding another one. Housing in Rwanda, because that's <coughs> the subject matter of this 
conversation that we're going to be having tonight. We need you to share with us your thoughts on the housing issue in the country. What is your experience? Are you happy with the state of affairs? Are you on your own? Do you think as a, as a tenant you're on your own or you feel that everything is fine? These are some of the things we'll be talking about right here on the program. And of course, as always, my name is Eugene Anangwe. Let me introduce my panelists. We have Charles Harper. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure is mine, Eugene. On How the program. Thank you so much, actually, yes. for coming on the program. Pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> pleasure <laughs> I've is mine. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, you used to be my role model. Ah, that's breaking news. I actually <laughs> did not realize that. You did not know about that. But I'm glad you've uh, stepped uh, stepped it up. and uh, We've upped the game. Eh? Yes, Thank congratulations. You. Thank yes. you so much, yes. Abba. Now, we also have Dr. Bazimia, who's an, uh, an expert on urban planning. Thank you for joining us on the program. Most welcome, Eugene. And my namesake, Kenneth, eh? who's a writer and, of course, writes a lot about housing. You're just from Ethiopia. You did a story about how Rwanda can learn lessons from the Ethiopian situation and of course, this article received the most, you know, retweets and tweets over 100 times, showing the magnitude of this problem of housing in the country. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Right. So, before we get even deeper into the program, it's important to also make it or put it on record that we did try to get on this program those in charge of housing issues from the Ministry of Infrastructure and also the Rwanda Housing Authority. But of course, I was given some reasons as to why they could not be able to come on the program. Even RSSP, I tried to get uh, their boss on this program so that we talk about the housing units that they are creating, but they were not able to come on the program. Nevertheless, we have to go on. And probably Kenneth can start by telling us in this particular situation, because the motion is tenants on their own, on these housing issues. When it comes to pricing, the landlords decide on what they want to do. And so tenants feel that they're on their own. Is this the same experience you feel when you talk to people when you're writing your piece? Well, I'm a tenant myself, so <laughs> I, I, I would know how they feel. Uh, and I will tell you, no tenant feels good until they're in their own house. And the question is, how do they get own a house? And that's why you're right. You needed a policy maker to answer that question. Uh, but what I know right now is that to be a tenant in Rwanda is even, I pity the word tenant because for me what I see, uh, if you were even going to fight for the rights of what you call a tenant, some of them are living in um, structures that ideally shouldn't be, uh, you know, called accommodation or accommodation facilities mm. uh, because of the blunted need for proper housing in this city. People are turning uh, things that ideally should be raised down into rentals and then making a kill off those, you know, turned around stuff. So if you're going to even protect a tenant, you probably want them to get out of where they are living because they don't have to live there. I will tell you, people dress well, work in nice offices, but they don't sleep that well. Mm -hmm. It's and the opposite. It is the, it's opposite. the opposite of what, you what, 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 what comes out in, in, in the image they portray Exactly, out there. because that's what happens. Uh, and th the most scary thing is that um, even people we think should be able to live in the kind of apartments that my friend Charles, you know, sells around, they, they won't afford them. You might need either two jobs, or you might need a crowd of friends to, to afford, you know, a single apartment in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth, for setting the pace uh, on this conversation. Charles, you go around. You sell these houses. You sell these units. And, and among the challenges that people are facing out here is, is the issue of costs. Uh, most of them saying the, the, the costs are just skyrocketing. And, and some of them are also not even able to borrow loans to be able to finance, you know, this, this opportunity that you're creating for them. Do you also share the same feeling that tenants are on their own? Uh, the best I can do for Kenneth right now is to sympathize with him. Mm. Because um, in economics, there's what they call the forces of demand and supply. No businessman will go into a project or a business venture with the intention of making a loss. If you're going to build houses for sale or for rent or build a commercial building for sale or for rent, you will target the market where you know you're not going to struggle to either sell or to rent it. 
and that is unfortunately that's how the, the world is but uh, just before I, I, I emphasize that point I want to really rub in um, the the point you you started the show off that you tried to get the policy makers on on the on, on this particular show and you failed it, it's quite a pity that at a time when year in year out every time we read the resolutions of the leadership retreat we hear about emphasis on solving the affordable housing program i mean problem so in the event that we have an opportunity like this and uh, i mean uh, with giving credit where it's due you you're, you're doing a fantastic job on the show debate 411 is a fantastic debate forum so for the policy makers under whom uh, housing falls to throw away an opportunity like this to clarify and bring forward some of the plans and intentions they have for them to throw away such an opportunity is quite is quite a pity but let me go back again to m to the earlier point that uh, kenneth uh, 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 wa was raising i think uh, for us in the private sector when we hear a case like kenneth's we are extremely excited because that's an opportunity to sell to somebody a house that's an opportunity to to really address uh, his problem to, to sell a house to him at a price that he will not be able to afford we that's an opportunity we, we, we th that's what i'm saying it's an opportunity because there is somebody who needs something that he's d he does not have so we tr create an opportunity to address that guy's problem however Rentals, and this is one of the biggest pr uh, problems that very many growing cities do not address. They look at affordable housing as affordable to buy. Whereas even from the onset, it should be affordable to rent. Now, uh, I'm glad we are with uh, Dr. Bazimia here. He spent uh, quite a number of years uh, in the UK. When you go to the UK, the most affordable rentals are council flats. These belong to the municipalities. And they are given to people on a criteria of not being able to otherwise afford on the common market or you're a vulnerable person, etc., etc., etc. That is one thing that you see is, is lacking in many, in many of our of, of our And this is something cities. you think we can be able to borrow a leaf from? Borrow a leaf from, and, and it, it, is, it is purely, uh, again, it is not driven by, by financial gain, mm -hmm. but by rather solving the problems of the cans of this world. Super. Yes. Dr. Vazimna, let me take you on, on a point that Haber brings out, that when he listens to Kenneth's problems, it's, he feels it's an opportunity for those in his sector and others to tap into and provide a solution to the needs of people who need this low-cost housing. Do you feel a sense of grabbing that opportunity by the relevant authorities, for example, you know, the, the, the city, uh, the Ministry of Infrastructure, whose housing is a docket that falls into it, and other key players? Do you sense a feeling that people are really tapping into this? This is the opportune moment that the policymakers should grab and the champion. It's good you are calling it low cost housing. I would rather call it affordable housing. Because low cost may still not be affordable. Because the housing options that we have on the market are actually talked of as low cost housing. But are they affordable? Housing is a social phenomenon, is a social aspect. And we should be able to live in a decent, affordable, rental-owned accommodation. However, if you look at the situation, not only in Kigali, but across the country, I don't think we have very many options of affordable housing provision. One wonders, he has talked of the municipalities. What are the options being provided by the municipalities? I don't see many. What are the options being provided by RSSB? I mean, every employer 
every employee in the country pays money into RISSB. And I think RISSB should be able to develop housing options that are tailor-made to the contributions made by every employer and every employee. So that my contributions, for example, should be able to afford me to own a house in 25 years of my working experience. But are those things being done? And one wonders, therefore, where is the tenant vis-a-vis -vis the environment out there? Who facilitates the potential tenant? Who provides for the potential tenant other than himself? Because at the end of the day, there are those who are even arguing and saying, as you mentioned, RSSB, uh, there was a tweet that, that came through earlier on that, uh, you know, RSSB is actually using, uh, this, is a, this was an allegation which I cannot prove, uh, you know, or confirm or verify right on this program, but it was a, a, a claim by one, one of our, uh, a, a friend of the show that RSSB is using the money to construct houses which they themselves cannot be able to, 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 to afford. Is this the same feeling I that you... I actually don't think there is a big problem with that. Yes. Uh, in as long as they are not forgetting the whole cross-section of the market. Because indeed, as Dr. is saying, we everyone who is employed is a contributor. So they need to be, uh, they need to be seen to be served. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 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 the model of RSSB and to some extent I can play devil's advocate even if they refuse to come to, to your show Eugene, is uh, the way I understand it is that invest and the proceeds of that go into serving a wider, a, a wider population. Is this what's happening? Would you say Again, that as a person uh, who's in this sector? You see, RSSB today, if, if uh, uh, again, I'm, I, I, I hope uh, Kenneth does not start shooting me now <laughs> because I'm playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Look, look at the at the mandate of RSSB in as far as health is concerned, because of recent they have put uh, the the uh, health the national health scheme. I think uh, they started with Rama, and, and I'm told Mitchell de Santé is also going in there if it has not yet gone in there. So you you can see there there is a wider outreach because. Housing is just one of the things, one of the components that we need in, in our lives. And so you feel lives. the proceeds from there is being channeled to serving in other That's what it should be. Mm -hmm. That's what it should and, be. And this is but let me also emphasize something. Yes. In 2006 or 2005, thereabouts, I stand to be corrected, there was probably the first ever uh, affordable housing scheme that was done in Kigali that was done in an area called Batsinda. Mm -hmm. That was done by RSSB and other partners, including the city of Kigali, which I think was a brilliant idea. And? Uh, they did about 250 houses. My concern is why after that time, it is several years down the road, they've not replicated or even improved a scheme like that. I will not blame RSSB at all for for investing in uh, expensive ventures. Because I believe for you to, to do uh, an affordable housing scheme, it has to be subsidized. How is it going to be subsidized? It's by doing an expensive project and pouring the proceeds of that. To another channel. Yeah, yeah. Kenneth, does that argument hold any water? Because, uh, you know, we are constructing and giving them out at an expensive price, using your own money, but using that same money that comes in return to channel it to other, you know, sectors. Does that argument hold water to a normal regular tenant who pays their social security, which is used to construct these houses, which they cannot own? I think RSSB got or is getting their priorities wrong. Uh, because you have to look at the numbers and you have to look the segment of the population you have in the city that is in most need and that population right now is not being served so for me we, we seem to be misfiring because all the houses i see coming up like we have this brilliant project that makes good candy for the eyes like you know th this one coming up here i don't know what, what, it, what it's called yes vision city but even that project has a problem we see 
land is one of our biggest problems in this city. But if you look at those projects, actually, we are wasting a lot of space in the air. If you look at the designs we are putting up, that's one of the problems. In the future, we probably may need to put demolish them again. Yes, demolish so that we create space upwards. This the population is growing. The designs of the houses we are looking at don't seem to be putting in consideration the future. And two, for me, the current investments are not in response to the numbers. We we had the housing project. Uh, I mean, a housing survey. The results that came out in 2012. If you look at those numbers and, and you look at what we are supplying, clearly th there is a conflict. So I wanted to see government playing a more central role you know, in this housing. B because ours is not um, a straight jacket market lady economy that we leave everything, as Charles is saying, to the private sector to decide who has the money to buy what. We, we are at a stage where government needs to lead by example. And wherever our officials have been for lessons, I want them to bring those lessons home. I think housing... And even improve them. Yes, and improve them. And we create, you know, a home-made solution for Rwanda's housing problem. Mm -hmm. And right now, I don't mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bazimia, is it, is it even practical for government to, to get in? Because he earlier on, when we started, said, you know, market forces, demand and supply. Can the government really come in here and, and save these tenants and say, you know what, we are going to be regulating and deciding on the cost for housing. This is the maximum it can go. This is the minimum it can go for a certain piece of house or certain like that. The government has no option other than to get in. You see, there is the famous argument that the thinner the government, the better for the business. The thinner the government, the better for development. I don't buy that. The government makes laws. The government makes regulations, determines the policies, sets the direction, sets the vision. H how do you get it out of the equation? Whether you like it or not, the government plays a central role in determining what, where, when, and how. And unless the government plays that, the business private operators, they will actually take advantage of the government absence in order to take advantage of their potential tenor. Is this the situation today? I think it is. In many ways, yes. Because let's take example of RISSB. Everybody knows that the average good salary in Rwanda is about 300000 A good tenancy out there costs almost that. Eugene, if you pay 300000 for your apartment, how do you live other than that? This is simply because the kind of apartment that we are developing is not actually tailor-made to the market that we have, to the income distribution that we have. Therefore, the government must play a role of balancing the income, the expense, the tenancy, and the private interest. But where, where, in, where in this world, let's say probably just in East Africa, where has this happened and successfully did? for us to say that this is what government needs to do. I mean, Charles. Read I the I statistics I for yes. Ethiopia. Yes. Read the statistics for many countries. Mm -hmm. South Africa, Angola, they are doing exactly that. You Actually, know? I, I just on top of that, mm -hmm. yes. on top of that, why should not my premium contributions in the RSSB be used for my housing option? Why doesn't the RSSB put up affordable housing that we can use the premiums we pay in the RSSB as part of my contribution to my housing. Charlie, you I want I to come I in? I want to let RSSB off the hook here. And be it Daktari or Ken, they have hammered a very important point. The role of government in delivery of affordable housing is not being seen. Now, you asked... Where has, we, where has it been done or in which countries around the region ha have we seen it being done? And again, I will say, I don't know of any country uh, where the Social Security Fund does not invest in income generating projects that benefit the contributors. I will go ahead to say that I, I feel that in addition to government not having a direct role, I mean a, a very active role, I don't think solving the housing problem is on top of their lists. 
If it was for starters, they would have been here. But secondly, you know, sometime, some years back when the government of Rwanda decided that they wanted to make ICT a top priority. priority. Yes. Taxes were waived on all IT imported products from a flash disk, a CD, computer, mention it, import duties were waived. Today, it's gone a step higher. You know, we have one laptop per child and all these programs, the government of Rwanda has invested significantly in the ICT in sector. In the ICT sector, fiber optic here. Yesterday, cabinet passed uh, 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 a resolution on the uh, Smart Rwanda program. There's so much that has been done. Why? Because ICT is a priority sector. If affordable housing was indeed a priority sector, a lot would have been done. I don't see, for instance, why the Rwanda Housing Authority does not have an execution mandate. They should be delivered. We have the national housings. Almost, you, you asked about the co comparison in, in the East African uh, uh, countries. There's none of those countries that don't have either a housing finance or a national housing uh, uh, either authority or national housing council. So you feel and the housing authority in Rwanda is, is, is just a ceremonial institution? Yeah, I think they have a regulatory mandate today. There were talks of them uh, widening their mandate or improving their mandate to, to, to actually be involved in delivery. But in as long as government is not directly involved in building and delivery of these houses, will be singing this song of there is no affordable housing, there is no affordable housing until the cops come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ken, before we go for the break, do you feel that this probably is just an excuse for you know developers who are developing and saying, you know what, we, s we sort of feel like government is not caring about us and just putting emphasis on other sectors. Uh, you know, when they say that, you know, we have a 25% uh, you know, duty on, 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 on import imported construction materials, w we want it to be you know, waived like we've seen in the ICT sector. Are these concerns valid? Yes, they are. Um, and, and that's why we need um, what uh, Charles is saying, uh, some kind of r real action from the side of the government. And this could start, by the way, from parliament. Let's just put something, some kind of instrument in place, a foundation. And we can generate this money. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the Rwanda Housing Finance, if we were to take the Ugandan model, for example, making it a financing authority. We can mobilize this money because you were referring to my article. If you look at all those comments, people are frustrated. People want a solution, but a solution is not coming. And yes, one of the reasons why the products we are having on the market are expensive, it's because most of the products are actually coming from out. They are being imported. Now, I've just returned from Ethiopia, and the government's hand is visible. It is there. All these condominiums that I was writing about, the government has just decided to throw itself in there. And guess what? They are killing two birds with one stone. They are providing affordable houses, but also creating jobs for young people who were previously on the streets because they get them, give them the construction and building skills, and they are the ones who are actually constructing, constructing these, houses. these houses. So. Like someone said, there's no excuse. Government has to come in. The developers, private developers, can actually also continue developing for the people they think have the money to support their infrastructure development. But government has to do its own role, and we should be able to see it. Kenneth will be giving us more details about his trip in Ethiopia. And of course, we'll take advantage of, of not paying for that flight uh, and, and uh, the accommodation and all the other, other expenses in learning no, from it's what not the Ministry of Housing <laughs> of Rwanda that paid for the, the that trip. That paid for the trip <laughs> and, and, and he's here, uh, you know, bashing. But anyway, what we're trying to say here is very simple. This is a very serious matter, and of course, if it really, really is serious to the concerned authorities, would really love to read from you. Talk to us. Just tell us this is what we are doing. For example, RSSB just gone to Twitter and tweet us at debate411. Tell us the real situation as it is. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Honorable Minister David um, uh, Musoni, please tweet us. Just let us know the facts on the ground as to what government is doing and other key players are doing to sort out this issue that is housing in Rwanda. That's the particular topic of discussion we're having right here on the program. Talk to us. When we come back, I'll be reading your comments because we are live. Do stay with us.
ahira umwe na kumati kesiti na nakumati kigali city tower maze uryoherwe ni gahantu kari y'ibiciro ringana na 150 kwijana kuma yesume y'ubwoko butandukanye koresha aya mahirwe uhabwe itapi wihitiyemo kuri kimwe cy'akabiri cyayo wari bwishure ihute ntutangwe amategeko namabwiriza birakurikizwa nakumati you need it we've got it so, so, so Natasha, are we are we cornering our teachers? Are we being unfair to them? At the end of the day, Fiona also mentions that the more you show them this condom, the more you're opening up their minds to having sex. But do you feel well represented? Do you think the media issues are well taken to the table when it comes to advocacy? How do we convince them and say that we shut it down because you exceeded the limits? The word conservation looks just complicated, but how do we simplify this? What role do our schools play then? And the people around our children, what role can they play in order to avoid these children becoming a menace in the society? Yes. Caroline, you just want to sound moral, but you're I... just not accepting the reality on the ground. Well, I want to sound moral and encourage it and practice it. An EA production. Shop at Nakma TTC and Nakma Kigali City Tower and enjoy 50% discounts on home living face towels, bath towels, and hand towels. Grab this great opportunity and get yourself selected carpets at a half price. Hurry, hurry, hurry while stocks last. Terms and conditions apply. Nakma, you need it. We've got it. Welcome back. Thank you so much for being with us right on the program. This is Debate 411. My name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. We're talking about the issue of housing in Rwanda. Share your thoughts, share your experiences. What are you going through where you are? Are you living in a decent house? Is it worth the money that you're paying? What would you like to be done to assist you? What should be the right channel to solve this problem once and for all? These are some of the thoughts we're really, really looking forward to reading uh, from you right on the program. All you need to do is go on Facebook, Eugene Anangwe, that's the page, or you can tweet me at I'm Eugene Anangwe or at Debate411. Use that hashtag, Debate411. We'll read your comments right here on the program. Before we went for the break, uh, gentlemen, we were looking at the roles of these institutions that we have and whether they are really doing what they need to be doing. But it's also important to move the conversation forward and look at the high-rise buildings that are coming up the commercial buildings, but the question that we even mentioned during the break was the occupancy rate of these buildings. Some of these buildings we've seen tenants staying there one, two months, they have fled, they have moved because of the cost and also probably because of the management. So it's not only a problem of the tenants in terms of the residential houses, we're also having problems with people who are going to these commercial buildings. So how do we deal with this area and, and, and what's your experience, Charlie? I want to take you back a bit mm. to one point that we raised just before we went for the break, yeah. and that is on the on the issue of uh, the role of government. It is it is inaccurate to say uh, that they are doing nothing at all, because there are initiatives that have been taken. For yes. example, I think just last month, uh, cabinet did pass a resolution that uh, for developers who go into affordable housing, the cost of infrastructure shall be either met by government or subsidized mm -hmm. by, by government. So uh, there, are, there are initiatives that are taken. If you're doing a large project, you can get an investment license that comes with, 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 uh, with, with incentives. But I think the bigger point that we're raising <coughs> is that that is not enough. Mm. In as long as they are not directly involved in the delivery of the houses, it will only be seen that government is doing something, but it will not be. It, it will only be heard of, but it will not be felt. Um, contrary to, back to the issue of commercial spaces that, that either RSSB or government has invested in, I, I can uh, confidently say that, contrary to, to, to the feeling that you have, generally speaking in Kigali, I'll take it beyond 
uh, RSSB and say most of the commercial buildings in Rwanda are doing well. This includes the buildings done by RSSB in terms of occupancy. They struggle for, for various reasons with the buildings that RSSB has out of Kigali. One of the reasons is I don't believe some of them were very wise investments. But the second reason uh, is, is, is from the way the buildings have been traditionally uh, managed. Which one would you mm. say was not a wise investment? Uh, if you go to Nyanza, Nyanza struggles really so much with, uh, with uh, occupancy. Uh, if you go to Ramagana, and sometimes I believe, actually no, I wouldn't say sometimes, I say all the time I believe one of the areas where our government has not done well is in terms of institutional coordination. RSSB invested billions of their contributors' money and taxpayers' money in a fantastic building in the heart of Ramagana town. Years later, the same government went and built, spent billions of money on the governor's uh, headquarters, the, the, the headquarters for the eastern province. Now, it's self-defeating. You, you can see they're actually causing you and I a loss. Whereas when you go to the western province in Karonji, the provincial headquarters are in the RSSB building. That is extremely clever of them. So uh, who is brought to book when they cause government losses in, 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 in circumstances like that? The same government has, has, has a piece of, of, of real estate there that is going to west. We've toured those buildings, and in some of them, they, 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 they are cobwebs in there. You know? In a bad yes, state. Yes, but, but, yeah. but Dr. Bazimi, I know those who are watching us right now and listening into this conversation have probably real direct issues that they're facing and they have concerns of okay fine i mean i'm occupying someone's house which i'm renting but this person always dictates how much i should pay and even after we've signed an agreement he would come and just change everything and just say you know what now i want you to be paying you know three months or six months in advance just because i repaired one or two things here and there how do we deal with these particular issues when it comes to the regulation, which you said must be a role of government to do, and, and, and we're not seeing it happen. Of course, the government is uh, an interjector, if we can call it that. Government is in charge of policy and policy formation and policy design. And unless the government plays the role of the facilitator in terms of what the policy regulates what, then things are bound to be done irrespective of rules and regulations. But if the government sets clear rules and regulations that the tenant and the landlord will have to abide with, then things become clear. If you were sitting in this government, what kind of rule would you have set, for example? Well, I wouldn't say I would set this rule or that rule, but definitely if I was in Rwanda housing, for example, definitely there would be rules and guidelines for the tenants and landlords. What exactly would that be like? What would it look like? For example, what role, what functions does each play? What is the relationship? How do you facilitate the landlord? How do you facilitate the... For example, mm -hmm. I was in North America for many years. Yes. And we definitely lived in rented houses. No landlord would come and change your, your rate halfway in the contract. I mean, the contract has a start, has an end, mm -hmm. and there are rules in between. You can only change my tenancy rules and regulations after the contract is expired, mm -hmm. not anyhow, anywhere. So I think the government plays that role. Again, as I have always said elsewhere, policy is nothing but a statement of intent. It sets vision, it sets direction, it sets objectives. And I think the government plays that role. No other institution plays that role. 
And I think that's what the government should be doing in the housing market. This is a wish should be doing. Ken, I your thoughts? Because be me, will government save us? Is this, is, this, is this all government's responsibility? Will it, will it really help us in this problem of, of, of landlords who wake up in the morning and just say, this is going to be your, 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 your new rent? For me, uh, uh, as a young man wanting to own a home one day, uh, I'll get you one. <laughs> and I hope I represent so many in this town. Yes. First, I want us to create an environment that enables me to have my own house. Mm -hmm. Let's not focus on renting. Mm -hmm. No one wishes to be a tenant the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So if they can facilitate me, create the environment to create my own home, that's mm -hmm. okay. But for people who can't own a home, let us put the right you know, things in place to, to have affordable housing. And this gets me back to the point of tenants vis-a-vis -vis landlords. What we have right now, mostly, for the most, uh, you know, part of the city, people are living with um, informal landlords. That's why there is no regulation. Someone has a, a what would be ideally boys' quarter behind their house, and they are renting it out to several people. It's not known to the right authorities. There is no way you're going to regulate such a person. You can only have uh, a regulation uh, on what you call tenancy agreements when you have people who have come out straight to say that we're investing in rentals. Mm -hmm. We know them, projects are there. If you want a rental, you go there. But I think the most important thing, again, is addressing the issue of incomes. If you look at what people are earning and what people are spending in terms of bills for rent and electricity, for example, a few, a few weeks ago, they increased uh, the bills for electricity. So my landlady the other day was telling me, okay, so you we're also increasing rent because of, you know, is she pays, you yes. know. So let us address the issue of incomes. Because, like, for example, in the papers, uh, several papers, there is um, a very beautiful apartment around Kachiru, which is advertising space. And an apartment goes for over 3,000 US dollars a month. Now, tell me, on average, how many people can afford such an apartment? Which is not the target market. So exactly, but we <laughs> should be the target market. To talking of we that. We should be the target market. It, it, and it is in dollars. Yes. We earn in France. In fact, that's the point that, that yeah? it brings out, which is also <laughs> of concern. No, no, uh, how about I, before I, you come I, in? I that, that's a very yes. key thing of concern. The, the issue of some, some landlords charging in foreign currency. And, and a few months ago, BNR came out with a statement you know, calling on those who are actually doing this or charging for any services or goods in foreign currency, that's illegal. And we still have this happening. I will start with the issue of how much rent you pay for what. Mm -hmm. Remember, I said market forces of demand and supply. Eugene, nobody, no clothes seller in this market grabbed your hand and forced you to buy that beautiful suit that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. You could afford it, you went to the shop, and you paid for it. But there are not so many Eugenes out there. And this is where Dr. S Bazima says exactly. someone has to come now and regulate so that everybody no business, has a, f a, f a playing field. There is no field. business that has no target market. Mm -hmm. If you come to us, at Century Real Estate, we have apartments that sell for 35 million francs. But we also have other apartments that sell for 200 million francs. Y you appreciate that there ev every product that you're selling, yes. every service that you're providing has a target market, mm -hmm. has a niche market. Mm. So uh, le le let's, let's not be too theoretical here. In the event that you can't afford the $3,000 apartment, uh, uh, Ken, what you should do, you go to the 150,000 <laughs> franc <laughs> apartment, it, 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 will, it will be there for you. Let but let me answer the issue on, yes. on the currency. Yes, very important. Central Bank came up with regulations, uh, I think last month or in September, on, uh, on uh, foreign currency uh, uh, transactions. And this is still going on? Yes. Clear violation? It is very difficult to police that. And I will give you practical circumstances. Very quickly, Charlie. Very, very quickly. If you are to do a big project, a sizable project of beyond, let me say, 500 million francs, the cheapest money you will get will be from foreign lenders, and you will get it in either euros or dollars. And you, you can only pay back that money 
in euros or dollars. So when you the change government it of Rwanda mm. has shares in a financial institution called Shelter Africa. Shelter Africa does not lend in francs. Shelter Africa lends in foreign currency, and it's going to be paid back in foreign. So you currency. say there's a regulation yes. that was put that is not even easy to police it itself. Is, it is extremely difficult to police. <laughs> Let me quickly read some of the comments that have been coming through right here on, on 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 Twitter. So many of them actually. I have uh, more love juice who says, Dr. Bazimia, policy is nothing but a statement of intent, words of the wise. Eh? And he says it is clear government is missing in public housing in Rwanda. Um, there's one here which was actually directly hitting at Charles Harbour here, which was saying uh, that affordable rent, uh, I, 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 uh, rent not house. It is every human's wish to own and not to rent. I think Harbour is seeing it wrong when you were talking about the issue of Supply, being demand, being and, and yes, someone needs to remind Hubbard that housing is a human right in Rwanda. I think those are just quick reminders uh, over there. And someone here feels that we are being unfair to RSSB and, and, and the Ministry of Infrastructure. And they're saying, Eugene, you should have invited anyone from Mininfra and Rwanda Housing Authority. I don't agree that they refused to appear. Mm -hmm. For a fact, we did invite them. We have evidence. And of course, we've been communicating. I was told that it was short notice on an issue that they deal with on a daily basis. Was it basis. actually short notice? Because How short is short notice? If, if someone was to tell you on something that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and they told you in the morning and you have that particular discussion, for example, late in the night at night. Maybe the guy has gone to attend an affordable housing conference <laughs> in Ethiopia <laughs> after <laughs> Kenneth Satiko. Right. So as we move forward uh, towards the end of the program, I want solutions possible solutions that if they are watching, those who are concerned, what would you tell them, Dr. Razimi? Once and for all to deal with this problem of housing, what would you tell them to do? They should match housing options with income parity that is available. I will give you a typical example. It's wrong for everybody to imitate being Dr. Razimi. And it's wrong for Dr. Razimi to be imitate being businessman, mm. so and so. I mean, he who has a longer reach will beat you at almost anything. So I think there should be an effort. And this is why I invited Ken. Research, data, information to generate knowledge that should be available to everybody. Yes. What are the options we have? What are the affordability rates? What is the distribution? I will refer to what he, he said you can have a housing for 35 million yes. as well as 200 million. Yes. But if you target 200 million, are you targeting Rwandese? Let's, let's be sincere with ourselves. How many Rwandese can afford a 200 million home? And how many can afford 35 million 